welcome to the Oasis. My name's Mike and today I'm going to be showing you guys and girls a quick and easy guide on how you can get set up to capture mixed reality gameplay footage. Now I'm not talking about the Windows mixed reality platform, no, no, no. I'm talking about how you can capture mixed reality gameplay footage that looks like you're actually in the game that you're playing and to convey that message across to your viewers. Instead of explaining it, how about I just show you this. I'm a living legend. You ain't heard yet, you not get the message from the moment that I step in. It looks totally awesome, right? For those that don't know, that game is Beat Saber, and that is coming out on the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive on the 1st of May. Now, it was this game that inspired me to learn how to get set up with mixed reality gameplay footage capture. Um, but what I wanted to do is uh, I wanted a quick and easy guide to show me what to do. Unfortunately, that didn't exist, so I thought, well, I'll make one myself and hopefully I can help some other people out there. So in this video, we'll be going through the equipment that you need, the software that you need, and step-by-step -step on how you need to get this set up so you can capture this kind of footage for yourself and show your audience how awesome VR is. So without further ado, let's dive in. So let's start off with the equipment you're going to need. You're going to need a green screen, or in my case, a green wall. This is so we can key this out in the live tool so you'll see the game behind us. Then you wanna make sure you've got some adequate lighting. You wanna make sure that you can light the green screen or green wall as evenly as possible. Now this is gonna make sure that you get the best possible results. You're also gonna want a webcam, or in my case, I've used a GoPro. You're gonna need an Oculus Rift or a HTC Vive, and more importantly, some coffee and some patience. Once you've got your room set up with your camera, your green screen and your lighting, I would suggest running through the Oculus sensor calibration. Now this is just to ensure that we have a solid foundation to build on and this is the thing that's gonna cause you the most problems later on if you skip this step. So uh, I'll show you quickly how to go through the uh, sensor calibration through Oculus and then once we've done that, we're gonna go through Steam and do the same with Steam by running through the room setup. So let me just quickly uh, show you that now. So once you've gone through Oculus, then go to Steam, click on VR in the top right corner, and then when Steam VR little uh, window pops up, you wanna click on Run Room Setup, and just follow the steps through that as well. Now that we've calibrated our sensors and our room is completely set up, you wanna download some software. So head over to Steam and search for Live, which is L-I-V. Download and install Live. Once that's done, head over to Steam again and search for Live Viver, L-I-V-V-I-V-R. Download and install that as well. And once that's done, head over to Google and search for Open VR Advanced Settings. I'll put a link to this in the description down below. Download and install that. Now, to record this footage, you're gonna need some recording software. You may already use OBS or XSplit. Either one of these programs will do you just fine. It's all down to personal preference, which one you choose to use. Once you've downloaded and installed all these applications, I would suggest restarting your PC and coming back. Once you've restarted your PC, fire up Oculus and Steam VR and launch the Live application. Once you've launched it, you'll come to this screen here and then it'll ask you if you want to install a virtual controller driver. Click install and allow that to do its thing. It's worth noting while we're here that if you ever get stuck throughout the tutorial, there is actually a written guide that's located in the top center of the window. So if you want some written instructions, they're also available there. If you launch the compositor, you will see that it gives you a live output window. Now this is what we're gonna be capturing later on when we wanna record our footage. But for now, you'll probably notice there is a watermark in the center stating powered by live. Now, if you wanna remove this, you'll need to sign up to their Discord and submit a ticket to request the watermark is removed. They'll provide you with an additional Steam key, which you then just install and reopen and the watermark will be gone. 
So now that we've gotten rid of the watermark and installed the virtual controller driver, you want to close the live application and restart SteamVR. When you restart SteamVR, if you wait 10 seconds after SteamVR has enabled, you'll see that your virtual controller would pop up in your SteamVR window. Now you're up and running, we're ready to go into the calibration. So get ready for the next step. So this part is the most complicated part and most important part of the process. So ensure that you've got Oculus and Steam VR running in the background and launch Live Viva from Steam. You'll be presented with this screen here and just click to continue. And then you'll be presented with this. Now here at the top, it's got your camera. So select the camera that you wanna choose for your calibration. In my setup, I've got the Elgato selected because I'm running a GoPro Hero 5 with a HDMI out into an Elgato HD60S. Below it, you've got the camera tracker and the virtual controller should be selected by default. If you don't see the virtual controller in this drop-down list, you need to close Live Viva reset Steam VR and wait for that icon to appear for your virtual controller and then launch Live Viva again. So once you've got your camera selected and your virtual controller selected, press the start calibration button in the bottom left. The rest of the process will take place in the headset itself. So put on your Oculus Rift or your HTC Vive and then follow the steps shown in the guide. The first step will be to get your controller as close to your actual camera lens as physically possible. You almost want it actually touching the lens and then once you've got it into position, press the trigger button. Then you want to go as far back into your play space as possible to calibrate the corners of your play space. Make sure that when you keep the controllers in the same rotation throughout the calibration. So at the beginning, when you clicked it on the lens, make sure it's as upright as possible and do the same with the two corners. Once you've done that, you'll be presented with the view of your physical controllers overlaid with the virtual controllers. Now the trick here is to dial in the settings to get them as accurately represented as possible. This will mean that you'll have to adjust the camera field of view, the X and Y positions, and sometimes even the pitch and rotation. Once you've spent a little time getting used to this, you'll soon pick it up and you'll be able to calibrate your controllers as accurately as possible. Once you've got them so they're practically one for one whilst doing the T pose and hands up and hands down and turning around and rotating, once you've kind of got them so they're practically one to one, then you're good to go and export the config file. Press export and then you can come out of the headset and then save the configuration file somewhere on your desktop and name it something relevant that you remember. Now, every time that you move or change your camera, you'll need to run through this calibration. So say if you wanted a camera directly over your head to record some awesome uh, Richie's Plank experience, for example, you would have to calibrate the camera again, but you can save it for different profiles and different cameras. Also, if you find that your calibration is completely way off, it's more likely that the first calibration is out of your tracking area. So ensure that your camera is in your tracking area when you press that first click and that your virtual controllers are lined up pretty well with your physical one. So once you're happy with your calibration and you've saved your calibration file to your desktop, we'll continue on and show you how to import those settings into the Live program itself. So just like before, ensure that Oculus is running and SteamVR is running with your virtual controller and launch the Live client. And now we want to set up our camera. Go to add a new camera and choose your device in the drop down list and then choose a higher frame rate as possible. Now here I've chose uh, 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. But if your camera can only do 720p at 60 frames per second, then that is more desirable than the higher resolution. So the higher the frame rate, the better the output is going to be. You want to add two frames of latency and then import your calibration by clicking the import and edit button, open the WordPad with your calibration settings, copy them and then paste them into the camera calibration box and press save. Then you wanna name your camera something memorable just in case you add further cameras in the future or decide to change the location of the camera. Then you want to go into keying and make sure you've got a green selected that represents the green on your green screen. As you can see in my output window, it's not quite right and this is because I haven't turned all my lighting on. As you can see here, when I did eventually turn my lighting on, things were much, much better and I could get a proper key result. Then you wanna transform your image by cropping the left and right until you've just got the keyed out image. Once you've cropped the left and right corners down to your keyed image, then you wanna make sure that your keyed image is right in the center. In the X axis, this is about 500. Click save and then you'll have your 
keyed out window in the middle and then the game will be on the edges. Now we're ready to fire up a game. And now after all that hard work, it's finally time for the fun part. Now you just need to choose a compatible game. There is a list of compatible games available on the Discord or on the Steam uh, store page, the Live Lion. It's worth noting that you must make sure that both controllers are loaded in Steam VR window before the virtual controller does. Otherwise this could cause issues. So just choose a game. I'm going to choose Audio Shield and I'll also show you some hot dogs, horseshoes and hand grenades footage. So fire up the game and then you'll see on the live output window, this is the window that you want to capture using OBS or XSplit, that once you've started the game up and actually started a track, then you will see the composited view. This comprises of the game and obviously the real life capture, which gives it this awesome mixed reality look. As you can see right now, I'm just facing the camera dead on. And this is where the OpenVR advanced settings comes in. If you press the menu button on the left touch controller, it will bring up the Steam menu. This is where you can choose Steam Advanced Settings and then go into Play Space and then rotate your Play Space 180 degrees. And this means that you can capture the footage from behind you. Just physically turn around in your Play Space 180 degrees, then you get this awesome over the shoulder look. So there we have it. I'm just going to show you a little bit more gameplay uh, showing you hot dogs, horseshoes and hand grenades and how that looks with this capture mode. And I have to say it does look awesome. I do appreciate there's a lot of steps involved in this guide, but hopefully it has helped you. So let's go straight to the outro. OK, guys and girls, so that is the end of the video and the end of my video guide on how to capture mixed reality gameplay footage on the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive. So I feel like this is the best way for some games to convey to your audience how awesome it is to be in VR playing these games. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below on what games you intend to record using this method. Uh, are you excited about Beat Saber coming out on the 1st of May? I'd love to know in the comments down below. If this video help, helped you, please leave a like. If you've got any technical issues, I would definitely go back to step one. Make sure your calibration and your sensor setup is rock solid. If that doesn't solve your technical issues, then I'd head over to uh, the Live Teams Discord server. They're really, really helpful and I'm more than happy to help you guys out with any technical questions that you may have. So thanks again for watching the video. Leave a like if it was helpful to you. Make sure you're subscribed for all my future content. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.